Hello students, welcome to this video session. My name is Samuel Chuku Emeka, as usual. <laughs> In this video session, we shall discuss your module 2 exam study guide. Your module 2 exam consists of the contents from your module 1 homework and model 2 homework so it is uh, this is how you get to the model 2 exam study guide uh, please it is highly recommended highly recommended that you do the prerequisites uh, that you have reviewed the contents from your model 1 homework and also the contents from your model 2 homework so we are going to be doing the questions that you are familiar with that you have already done okay um, what are variables we mentioned it in the model 1 uh, homework study guide uh, we say that variables are the characteristics of the individuals of the population being studied uh, and we can either classify variables as qualitative or quantitative uh, then we can further classify quantitative variables as either discrete variables or continuous variables we did some of these examples in your model 1 homework uh, number of gigabytes of RAM in a computer uh, this is a numerical measure that is quantitative variable uh, amount of concrete needed to build a house it is quantitative then you can also say it is a continuous variable uh, because you cannot count it if you can measure it it is continuous variable if you can count it it is discrete variable uh, my wonderful students, number of students in Mr. C's applied finite mathematics class. Yes. My great DRS students, uh, this is a quantitative variable and because you can count how many students I have in my class, it is also a discrete variable. A breed of dog, you have several breeds of dogs. Uh, this is a qualitative variable. It is not a numerical measure. It is like an attribute because it has attribute uh, classifications. We say it is a qualitative variable. Uh, when we talk about uh, sampling done without replacement, that means when you select the individual from that sample, that means you cannot select that individual again. Confounding in a study means when you uh, the effects of two or more explanatory variables are not separated. So any relation that may exist between the explanatory variable and the response variable might be due to some other variables not accounted for in the study. And we say that a locking variable is an explanatory variable that was not considered in the study but it affects the value of the response variable in the study. Locking variables are typically related to explanatory variables in the study. Uh, please, we talked about this in the um, introduction to statistics. You need to view that video, please, about variables, explanatory variables, response variables, and the rest of them. Uh, to estimate the percentage of defects in a batch of laptops produced at some dumb for peas computers, <laughs> a quality control manager selects every 21st laptop that comes off the assembly line beginning with the 10th until he obtains a sample of 30 laptops. What kind of sampling is this? We say it is systematic sampling. You can read those up in your uh, textbook. Question 10. The Baltimore Sun 
newspaper asks its readers to call in their opinion regarding the relationship between the police and the community in Baltimore City, State of Maryland, of the United States of America. What type of sampling is used? It is convenience sampling. And we did this in model, um, I think we did this in model 2 homework study guide. Pareto chart. When you have the Pareto chart, you see how the bars are decreasing. The bars are in decreasing order. Which high school has the most seniors? You see, it's the blue one, East Lake, East Lake High School. What is the number of seniors in Edison High School? Edison High is represented by this color. I think this is lime color. And that is 1,000 students. How many more seniors are in Deerbrook High School than in Blantenburg High School? So first of all, we find out of Deerbrook High School. Deerbrook is this color. That is about 750 students. And then uh, Blantenburg High School is that color, about 650 students. So the difference is 100 students you have 100 more students in Deerbrook High School than in Blantenburg High School. Uh, the age distribution of 50 randomly selected students in Benita's Innovative School is shown below. A. Construct a relative frequency distribution of the data so we talked about the relative frequency distribution, uh, which is the, uh, the individual frequency divided by the total frequency. Sigma, sigma means summation. So if you get your calculator, uh, this is Windows 8. You just get your calculator here, search, calculator. And this is the one we need here. Initially, you will have it in standard but you change it to scientific so when you add this up you know 5 plus 8 is 13 13 plus 17 is 30 30 plus 13 is 43 43 plus 7 is 50 and then when you do 5 divided by 50 that is 1 out of 10 0 0.1 you can go ahead and convert it to percentages because they would ask you about the percentages so I just went ahead I, com I found a relative frequency and I also made a column whereby I could go ahead and compute the percentages as well. So if you do 8 divided by 50, it will give you that. And just multiply by 100 to get the percentage. And that will be 16%. This is in percent. So this is the actually the, the relative frequency distribution table is just these three columns it does not include this but i had to go ahead because the next questions they asked about the percentages so i just wanted to kind of save space i just went ahead and did the percentages right away to reduce the number of slides and also to reduce this video right so that it will not be long okay <laughs> Uh, what percentage of students are in the three, uh, three to five age group? So if we look at that, uh, three to five age group is 10%. What percentage of students are 12 years or older? 12 years or older means it could be this age group and this age group. So 26% plus, plus 14%, that gives you 40%. Question 13, the table shows the ages of the males who received tickets in Hampton, Florida from 1998 to 2000. Uh, I think I read about Hampton, Florida. I decided to put this city. I read that they give a lot of tickets. That is what I read. <laughs> okay. How do we interpret this table? Uh, males, males between the ages of 28 and 33 years old uh, received uh, 113,000 
229 tickets from 1998 to 2000. The number of males between the ages of 40 and 45 years old received 48,340 tickets from 1998 to 2000. So, and the rest of them, you know, that is the interpretation. So we see here that the number of classes is five. One, two, three, four, five. We have five classes. Uh, lower class limits are these. We call it lower class limits or lower class intervals. 16, 22, 28, 34, 40. Upper class limits, 21, 27, 33, 39, 45. The next thing they ask is a uh, class width. What is the class width? Okay, class width, you can either do it lower class limit of second class minus lower class limit of first class, which is 22 minus 16. That gives you 6. Or you can do it lower class limit of third class minus lower class limit of second class. 28 minus 22, that is 6. Or you can do it lower class limit of fourth class minus lower class limit of third class. 34 minus 28 gives you 6. Or you can say lower class limit of fifth class minus lower class limit of fourth class. 40 minus 34, that gives you 6. Or you can also do it lower, uh, upper class limit of second class minus upper class limit of first class. 27 minus 21, that is 6. And so on and so forth. That gives us the class width or the class size. Class width or class size. Question 14. The table shows the number of people in the city of Y. You know there's a city called Y, Arizona. <laughs> y, Arizona. Who like mathematics? How many of you like mathematics? If you like mathematics, say hi. If you like mathematics, say hi, Mr. C. Or say, raise your hand. Okay. Create a, free, a relative frequency distribution. Round to three decimal places as needed. Folks, I want you to listen here. Uh, so we, of course, we get the uh, total frequency. And we now find the relative frequencies of each class. We have four classes here. Uh, I wouldn't go immediately. Why didn't I come and uh, wrote 8.6%? Why? Because I might get it, you know, you don't want to approximate. You do not approximate until the end. Okay. So we have like 1428 divided by uh, 16649. And if you add up all this, it gives you 16649. So it gave me this. Okay. I used the, I used the, I didn't use the calculator on the computer. I used the, my Casio calculator. But I wrote out all the digits. Uh, if you have it up to five, six, seven digits, you're good. You don't want to approximate this. No, you don't want to do that. They only said you should round uh, to three decimal places here. Here, that is here. Not the percentages. Okay, so you, you have, when you're, when I had to put the percentage as well because they will ask questions about it. So I just said, let me go ahead and put it. So please don't round up. Don't round up. You can write how many digits did I round this? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Yeah. So uh, you can have it up to 9 digits, you know. Uh, yeah. The, 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 the greater the number of digits, the more accurate you are. So that is what you do for all of them. The next question says, what percentage of people were between 35 and 49? Round to the nearest tenth as needed. So you have to first of all, uh, 30, 35 and 49. So 35 and 49 is this. 32.8% because they say round to the nearest tenth. Okay, some people might say, okay, even if you did it like this, you will still get the same thing. All right, that is being lucky. You might not be so lucky in your question. 
So because if you can, if you come and rounded it here, then you multiply it by hundred. You might mix. You might miss by one decimal place. Yeah, you might miss by one factor or two factors. So you don't wanna. You want to do this fraction and write out every, write out everything. Multiply by hundred. Write out everything without rounding. Don't come here after you have rounded and then multiply by hundred. So just do it. Multiply by 100 and write exactly what you got. You round at the final answer. Okay? You only round at the final answer. Uh, what percentage of people we are 34 or younger? Um, 34 or younger. So, will be uh, this class and this class. So, you add this up. Don't come and add this two up. No. If you do that, you're likely to get it wrong. Add this up. Okay? And how will you do it? You might just come and do like this. I will show you how to use the memory key. So you don't have to write all this. 1428 divided by 16649 equal to. So save this in memory. Just save that in memory. And then you now do 3731. If you don't know how to use this function, Re re rewind the video and look at what I'm doing again. Otherwise, you have to write it out with your hand on a pa uh, on the paper. Thirty-seven thirty-one divided by one six six four nine equal to this. So I'm going to now add this up. Add it to the memory. You can also put M plus. It adds it automatically. Or you just do plus and recall memory. So right now, let me recall the memory right away. And then I can multiply this by 100 to give me the percent. 30.9. 30, 30 you know, they want us to do this to 10 to the nearest tenth. To the nearest tenth means one decimal place. To the nearest tenth means one decimal place. So, um, if I do one decimal place, you know, this is more than uh, 5. If I add it here, it is more than 10 I added here that would be 31.0 percent 31.0 percent does it make sense do you get it question 15 what is your favorite color so uh, here is they want us to see whether this graph is misleading or not misleading so if you look at this graph, 2 is smaller than 3, 3 is smaller than 5, 5 is smaller than 8, 8 is smaller than 10. You know, the bars, the length of the bars, you know, are kind of proportional to the numbers. Okay, so if you look at this 5, 5 and 10, it's like double, it's like double. So this graph looks okay. You know, it is not misleading at all. And there's nothing you can do to... I mean, it's, it's okay as it is. So, you don't need to improve on it. Because this 5 is... 5 and 10, 10 is double. And this looks like it is actually... And then 5 and 3 is 8. If you add up this plus small thing remaining here, you get this bar 8. 2 plus 3 is 5. You add up this and a small thing remaining here, you get the 5. So the graph is not misleading. Okay, let's check the next one. If you look at this graph, is it misleading? Uh, if you look at this graph, it um, it looks like you spent more money, you know, twice as much money is spent on wages than on products. Because you 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 look at this. If you add up these two, you know looks like 48 percent but this is only 31 percent 31 percent shouldn't be that long you understand what i'm saying 31 percent should be like maybe here okay it shouldn't be that long because this looks as if you double this like this double Th this even looks more than double anyway it looks more than double so uh this should be 49 percent or maybe 50 percent this you know, if it was not to be misleading, it should be like 50%. So, that is what you can do to improve it.
yeah it looks misleading because this is too long this looks more than double this and because of that and this is not 48 percent it's 31 percent so the length is not proportional to the percentages it is not proportional so it has to be proportional that is the way you have uh, you have to do to improve on it uh question 17 number of bakeries in two cities so you see this this is very small i mean this is very small compared to this you see if this is seven and this is ten that's a lot that's a lot it's not proportional at all you know it's not so this should be proportional as if the for this you know you either make this to be too to be small like up to you know make it to be smaller you make this to be a little bit big up to 70 percent of these yeah but if you look at 10 and you look at 7 like this this is too small compared to this okay uh we are going to stop here for tonight uh please watch out for other videos as well uh, and if you have any questions, uh, feel free to contact me, okay? Uh, thank you so much for listening to this video session. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to contact me. And you have a great evening.